Well, Razorback fans, I heard all I needed to hear. Dan Enos met with the media. I'm buying all the stock on him and the Arkansas offense. So let's talk about why on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday as we have finally made it. The weekend is upon us. And after, uh, I guess, tomorrow, what is it, two Saturdays from tomorrow, is when we'll actually be having Razorback football. How sweet it is. So imagine putting in your two weeks notice and then you got finally get to leave the job. That's kind of what it is. We're putting in our two-week notice of fall camp and non-football season. And once two weeks is up, now we get to have a good time. But it's going to be here before we know it. And I uh, love having everybody listen in and tune in and watch the podcast. And again, folks, if, uh, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I need to say this more. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, uh, comment, subscribe, do all of those things. And if you're on uh, the, the listening platforms, of whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Give me those five star ratings. You know, I've had some trolls take over and uh, start giving me some low ratings, and I don't like that. Not that it matters, but still, I want to show everybody that this is a really legitimate podcast. We know what we're doing on here, and we know what we're talking about. But uh, I would appreciate any sort of uh, positive vibes that you could give to the podcast by any means necessary. So I would appreciate each and every one of you for listening each and every day. But I got to tell you, as I did the cold open and talking about Danny Enos. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to hear much from Danny you know, since he's been hired. I think uh, the only press conferences that I can remember was him when he first got hired and the media got to talk to him. And then yesterday, like that's it. That's all we've had a chance to hear from Danny knows. And we know that he was the offense coordinator back in 15, 16 and 17 for Arkansas. We know he's excited to be back. We know that he was part of an offense or was coaching an offense that was one of the more electric and more uh, uh, just productive offenses overall when he had Brandon Allen for over 3,000 yards and Alex Collins, uh, rest in peace, for 1,400 yards, whatever it was. But we know a, a lot that he's perfectly capable of running a really solid offense. But as I got to hear his press conference, which I which encourage you to all check out on YouTube, as there's a few uh, few avenues that you could go about it, Listening and watching his pod, uh, his uh, his press conference really stuck out to me. And we're going to go through a few of the clips for each of these segments and talking about the offense, especially because uh, I think it's really fascinating. But let's start with this. Danny knows talks about install. And you all remember about the whole jokes about Chad Morris. He's like, ah, we're 33 percent installed in the first year and then 60 percent installed the next year. It's like none of that nonsense is there. Here's Danny knows talking about uh, the install of the offense and where it currently sits. Uh, as far as fall camp and being two weeks away from the regular season starting out. Were you with install? Did you get it done early this week? And what's the kind of the yeah, focal point we're, heading on? We're, we're, we're now going into uh, kind of like uh, miscellaneous things, if you will. Um, things that uh, – wrinkles from different things that we want to do. Um, during camp, things always come up as well. Like you start doing something well and you go, ooh, you know, we might be able to – do this off of that, you know, have complimentary plays to your, to your best plays. And so we're, 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 we're still doing that a little bit, but the majority of the install is all, is all through. Um, we got the foundation in of what we're going to do from a run game protection and pass game standpoint, feel really good about it. Um, and now we've been, I, what, what we've been doing with the scripts is challenging them now. All right, here's, here's, we got it all in, but now we're changing it. We're doing it today out of this personnel group, and we're going to do it today out of this formation. We're going to do it th- today out of this motion or whatever that is. And so we're trying to continue to, to apply pressure, but in a different way, if you will. So it's good to see where the offense is at, and, and the install is, is, is going about where it needs to be. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a thing where maybe it's overlooked or maybe it doesn't get talked about enough, which I feel like. You know, this podcast, we say that a lot. Or I, I say we, I'm saying it. Like, it's just, it's not like it's a group effort. I don't have a mouse in my pocket. I say it, uh, that things that don't get talked about a lot, I like to talk about. And I feel like with Danny Nose and, and the install of the offense and, and how it's coming along, you can tell that there is a confidence level that Danny Nose has in the offense that he has taken over, uh, the players that he has uh, on the, in this offense. 
and where it stands as far as what he is asking these players to do schematically, uh, effort-wise, and the depth that he has, it, it seems like it's all coming together. And man, that that really gives me a lot of excitement. Because if you go back and listen to press conferences from offensive coordinators in general, a lot of times they'll be uh, pretty much coach speak or they'll uh, approach it in, a, in a, you know, looking at the positives instead of talking about the negatives or kind of sugarcoat it a little bit. But Dan Enos, I, I went back and watched a couple of his press conferences back from like 2015, 2016 when he was at Arkansas. And I, I actually tried to, I actually went back and found the one that it was for fall camp when he was discussing the quarterbacks and where they're at. And I'm not saying he was saying everything was terrible and it was crap, but he was pretty critical of, of some things that weren't to the level that he felt like they needed to be, not to his liking. And then now you hear him, and it's not to say that he hasn't had concerns or, or, or issues or anything, but to hear him talk about what he is doing with offense and knowing that he has a quarterback in K.J. Jefferson, which we'll talk about that in a second, but knowing he has a great quarterback, he's got, he's got great running backs, he's got wide receivers that are really bringing it, he's got the tight end position that's coming along. As exciting and as, as happy that you could expect someone like Dan Enos to be about it, he is. Like, he is pumped. And he is thrilled in the fact that this is something that, as an offensive coordinator, it's like a dream. If, you know, if you're a race car driver and you're handed the keys to a Lamborghini, you're excited about it. You know, you could still drive if it was a, you know, an old Pinto. You could still drive it. You could still, you know, make it work, maybe get from A to B, but one's a lot more fun than the other. And that's what I'm getting the vibes from Dan Enos is he knows that he has the keys to a Ferrari. He knows he has an offense that is not going to be a work in progress, but is ready to go right now. Like, as soon as you step on the field, we got options, boys. We know how to make it work. And he talked about the comparisons that he even – had when Brandon Allen was the quarterback and Alex Collins, you know, the great pieces that he had to make that offense work and click and everything. And he, he looks at this offense as similar, not in the way of Brandon Allen similar to KJ or Alex Collins similar to Rocket, like not, not like that, but similar in the fact that it has the upside and the potential to possibly be an offense that is one of the best ones in the SEC. Very efficient, very productive and has plenty of guys able to step up and make some big plays. They get it. They understand it. They're all in on it. And I love hearing that. Like, I love the fact that Danny, you know, so I'll be honest, like I wasn't, when he got hired, it wasn't like that. I'm like, oh my goodness, rock star, hire, home run, let's go. But I wasn't saying it was crap either. Like I was kind of like, it's safe. It's good. I, I know he's been at Arkansas before. He's been at other places in the SEC before. He's perfectly capable of doing this and making this work. Like, I, I was all right with it, but just knowing and hearing from him in this press conference and how he is approaching the, uh, the players that he has and, and KJ and being under Sam Pittman and, and everything, it gets me excited to know that you have someone like him calling the shots. He's very direct on what he wants. He even mentioned the fact that he's like, I think that developing under snap uh, or under center snaps are vital to a quarterback's development. He's like, it's easier to transition from going under center to behind center than behind center to under center. He's like, because you got to have an ability to do both. And he says, KJ, you know, they've been working on that and, and, and going to have some of those packages that are in place. And he's like, it makes you a better passer. So just hearing those little tedious things as minute as they may be, as small as they may be, that's what I want. That's what I want my quarterback coach and offensive coordinator to say. I don't want him to say, we're, we're going to be balanced and we're explosive. Uh, we're going to run the ball, and we're going to pass the ball, and then we're going to run the ball some more, and then we're going to pass the ball some more. And we're going to be effective. We're going to be exciting. Like, no, no, no. Like, that's great. I want to hear those things, the specifics, the details, the little things, the minutia that's going to be the difference of a team being good or great. Because we know KJ is a good quarterback. We know Rocket's a good running back. We know this offense has pieces to make them good. We know that. But what can make them great? What's going to take them to that next level? That's what I like to hear. The little small details on how it's going to be better and what they're doing to make it better. So I'm all in on Dan Enos. Uh, I, I, I think that, again, you're thinking I'm overreacting because it's one press conference. But 
you listen to it, if you pay attention to him, and you see exactly how he's approaching this entire deal in his first year, it's hard not to get excited and pretty pumped up about what the possibilities may be. We'll talk about KJ Jefferson and the differences of quarterbacks that he's had, Dan Enos that is, since KJ Jefferson, and it was really fascinating to hear him break it down. We'll talk about that here in just a segment, folks. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit, and it's the same way when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits just right. The first time around, just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit, or you get your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop on eBay Motors, and when you do that, you also get to check out 122 million parts to choose from. You'll be back in the game in no time, after all. It's easy to bring home a win when you get the right parts guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, I'm going to play another clip from the Dan Enos press conference, and uh, I'm going to give you a heads up. It is a lengthy one. And when I say a lengthy, it's, a, it's about three minutes or so long. And normally it's like, you know, it, it seems, you're, like, ah, you're lazy, you're just having it play. But here's why I think it's so important, because he's going to talk about the specifics of quarterbacks that he has coached and how they've been different. And he's coached a lot of great ones. Brandon Allen, Austin Allen. Uh, you think about uh, Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa and Mac, Mac uh, Jones. And you think, uh, you know, Talia Tagovailoa, now KJ Jefferson. Like, he's coached a lot of really, really good quarterbacks in his time. And there's been some differences between a lot of them. And so I'm going to play this clip in its entirety. And this is another thing to notice, too, folks. If you watch that press conference for Danny Enos, it's not that he is short with his answers, but he doesn't really say a whole lot that he doesn't want you to know about. Like, he's not going to give a lot of fluff to it. He's going to be pretty direct. So for him to speak this long on just one question shows you how much it means to him, how much he's passionate about it, and also how important it is to understand when it comes to the differences of the quarterbacks he's coached. Take a listen. I think there's been a lot of talk about, you know, KJ, the entire offense, just kind of adjusting to your philosophy based off what the, you know, the offense was last year. But I'm curious, you haven't had really a a quarterback that's an athlete like KJ in a while, are you, you know, what kind of adjustments are you making to kind of maximize him and uh, how does that work? Um, I, I think uh, everybody I've coached is different, you know. Um, like I told the I told the quarterbacks uh, the first night, you know, I, we go through my quarterback um, commandments and our philosophy of playing the position. And I said, you know, one thing about this position is, you know, I think I had six or seven guys that I coached in the NFL last year, and I said, you know what, they're all different, and they've all taught me something. They've all, you know, when I was young, maybe I tried to put guys in a box a little bit or whatever, but, you know, they're all different. Um, you know, Cooper Rush and Brandon Allen are different from Jalen Hurts and Mac Jones and Tua, and, um, you know, it's just I've learned from them. So some guys are better at this and a little better at that. My job is to try to make them equally as good as everything as, as I can. Um find out where their deficiencies are and try to make them their strengths. That's my job yeah, to figure that out. But then at the end of the day, uh, we're going to grow and we're going to be like, okay, here's what we do well. Here's what we do the best. And, and uh, we're going to do those things. So um, I think KJ is, is a, is a guy that can do a lot of different things. I think he could be a, I think he could be a true drop back passer and get by and do be very, very good at it. He's like I said, he's got great eyes, anticipation, Great arm talent, but man, this guy is a big, really, really good natural runner. As an as a natural runner, he's got great vision. He sets up blocks. I mean, um, he's he's a tremendous athlete. I think we're gonna f find a fi a, a nice, um, good balance between uh, letting him do the things he can do with his arm, and then I'll, I'll also obviously allowing him to do the things with his legs. And at the end of the day, to make us. Uh, the most efficient offense we can be to help our football team win. And so um, he's he's a really good athlete. And he's, again, 
I'm I, I've got I'm getting to know him. I've gotten to know, know him, and I'm and, and he's different. He's different than the other guys. Just like Her, Jacoby Criswell is different than anyone I've ever coached as well. And you can go right down the list. And like I said, I I just I, I enjoy so much being around them and learning them and and listening to them how they how they learn things, how they visualize things. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, they're all different. Some are short, some are tall, some can run, some can't, you know, but there's some also some common characteristics all the great ones have, okay? And the first one is they got uh, mental toughness. And they got physical toughness, and uh, KJ has that. And the next thing, they have the guys I've been around I have great humility about themselves, and they understand that it takes more than just them to be successful, and they put the team before themselves. KJ has that as well. And then the other thing that they've all had, um, though all those guys have had is a tremendous amount of uh, competitiveness to them. They have almost a chip on their shoulder, if you will, like they got something to prove. And uh, KJ has that as well. And then the last thing is, is just tremendous functional intelligence, the ability to take things from the, from the classroom and then functionally have that translate to the field. And KJ has that as well. So, um, like I said, there are different in a lot of ways, but there's a lot of common things that they have in, in, com- in com- common as well. And, and uh, man, this, this guy's a, he's a unique player and a unique person. And he's, like I said, I've, I've, I've already learned a bunch from him. Appreciate Pig Trail Nation for that uh, for that clip and that video. And I'm telling you right now, man, if, if that doesn't get your nips hard to where you can cut diamonds on them as a football fan, I don't know what will. Like hearing that uh, and, and comparing the, the quarterbacks and who he's coached, first off, it shows you just how many great quarterbacks he's coached, but knowing what it takes to make them successful and knowing that K.J. Jefferson, of the commandments that he mentions and uh, of a quarterback, that K.J. has them all. Like that is just outstanding like it's incredible to hear that and, and to hear it breaking down like that I mean listen we, we all know that KJ's great but why is he great you know like what what makes him a great quarterback what may is it just simply always a great athlete it's like no there's a lot more that goes into it and, and KJ's a unique a unique quarterback too to where he's uh, you know it, it's I don't want to say larger than life but he is so like when it comes to like his social media presence he's his own character he's own he's own person his team loves him. His team is always going to have his back. He seems to be a great leader. And, you know, it, but it's not a look at me thing. It, you know, it's not like he's he's always about, you know, let the cameras be on me or anything. He's a, he's a very humble guy. And so just hearing it from his personality and knowing that he has all the attributes that you need to be a great quarterback and from someone who Dan, from Dan Enos who knows what it takes to be a great quarterback, an elite quarterback in this conference. Uh, I don't know what else needs to be said. Like I, I don't know what else needs to be even looked at or even thought about because, man, that that's outstanding. I mean, just truly outstanding. And I, I, I this I've been excited about football season, but after hearing this whole thing, it gets me even more excited for football season. Just uh, really cool to hear that and to see it all actually play out and how Danny is is going to uh, look at it. But we'll talk about the, actually the backup quarterback position, which is very important. Here in just a second, but folks, this episode is brought to you by Markel from Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between. Markel has been helping Arkansas small business community for over 30 years. Markel is a global specialty insurer with a truly people-first approach. And to them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper. It's a promise to help get people to get back on their feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on-the-job injuries can be expected. You work hard to build your business, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have the right insurance coverage. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating a 25th year anniversary, whether you have one employee or a thousand employees, Markel aims to understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. So find a local independent agent to get free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markelinsurance.com slash locked on. That's M-A-R-K-E-L insurance.com slash locked on. Markel, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance cover, carrier coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markel is a registered trademark of Markel Group Incorporated. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You know, we've heard about the offense in general and the install. We've heard about KJ Jefferson, but uh, another position that is very important, as we all know and we've talked about, is the backup quarterback, because knowing how the quarterback position works and how injuries do pop up, it's very important. And it was costly to Arkansas when they really did not have a backup quarterback 
that was serviceable enough to be able to help him out and win some games. But Danny Nose had this to say about Jacoby Criswell, which looks to be that he's going to be the guy. He's going to be the uh, backup quarterback, which I'm fine with. I think everybody is. But he had uh, this to say specifically about Criswell and the job he's done and what he has really been able to add to the offense as the backup quarterback. Yeah, we feel really good about Jacoby. I think he's had, um, you know, really good camp. He had a really good spring. Um, he's got tremendous arm talent, like elite arm talent. Um, he can make throws in the windows. I mean, he threw a post the other day, like 60-some yards in the air in, into a breeze. and um, So he, he, he can make some of those wild throws um, that a lot of guys can't make. But then when you when you throw on top of it that he can run, he's, he ran 21-plus miles an hour this summer, I believe. Um, he, he, he's a – He's a guy that can do them both, you know. And, uh, again, he's he's a little bit different, too. He's really smart, um, studies the game. And, uh, yeah, we have a lot of confidence in Jacoby, and I think he's just going to continue to get better. So that's what you want to hear about the backup quarterback, looking good and uh, being able to add it to where he's he's been you know, very smart, he's been pushing, he's been uh, doing the things, the little things that he's needed to do in, in order to – uh, be that guy, and he even feels confident that if he has to come in and win a game, he can come in and win a game. Uh, there's not any sort of panic mode with him. And again, I'm I'm hoping that we don't have to see Jacoby Griswold much at all this season. I think everybody is, because that means that KJ's healthy and everything's going good. Only time I ever want to see him is when they're beating a team so badly that they put in the backups. That's the only time any of us want to see him. But I think that that's such a nice change and a nice thing to hear about the backup quarterback and the offensive coordinator, quarterback's coach, feeling so confident that if he has to come in to win a game, he can do it. If he has to come in and lead the team down the field for a touchdown drive, he can do it. If he has to come in and just for a possession, just for a play or two, he can do it. That is important. That's vital. And that's going to be a difference maker when it comes to how this team is going to be able to perform offensively this football season. Like, I'm getting excited, man. I, I think that's. I think you can probably all tell from the the tone in my voice and where I'm at right now. Like, I'm just, I'm just pumped, man. I just cannot wait for this football season to get going. I'm sick and tired of talking about it. I want to see it. Uh, but it's just amazing. We have. It's like two weeks away. Is not bad, but it's also like really, really far away. It seems like, but I just can't wait to see it, how it all plays out, how it all goes down. And we're going to have some fun here on the locked on Razorbacks podcast each and every day, bringing you some great coverage. And I may be doing some things special, uh, when football season comes around on uh, the Sunday after, like whether it's a live stream or a, a special recording podcast or, you know, something like that. Uh, we'll have some fun with that too. And, uh, do some fun, fun things for that. Cause I believe uh, that's a that's a perfect time to be able to have some reactions when it comes to those games as well. But either way, it's going to be fun. Can't wait. And we're going to keep it moving. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. And we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel next Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you then.